Welcome to France. We're just a few days away from the French Grand Prix, the eighth round of the 2019 Formula One World Championship. We're based just a stone's throw from the Mediterranean, not far from Paul Ricard. And there's some big news ahead of the race weekend that we wanted to talk about. So I'm joined by Scott Mitchell to get a little bit into the latest Honda upgrade. Now, Scott, it's a, a V6, so the internal combustion engine and a turbocharger upgrade. And we didn't expect this this early, did we? No, traditionally uh, we'd only be one race after a manufacturer introduces its first upgrade of the season and here we are with uh, seven races in the books and, and Honda's already rolling out uh, what it's calling spec free, its second upgrade of the season which we wouldn't normally see until after the summer break, Belgium or, or Italy time. So it is uh, it's very much ahead of the traditional schedule but if you ask Honda they say that it's a decision that they've made in conjunction with their teams, Red Bull and Toro Rosso. It's according to their plan, their schedule. It's nothing to do with a problem on the Spec 2, which got introduced in Azerbaijan. So it seems it's full steam ahead and just a uh, another example of uh, all the effort that's going into the Honda project. And let's face it, it's a big boost for Red Bull. And we're going to see it on both Red Bull main cars and one of the Toro Rosso's, is that yes, correct? Yes, that's right. Uh, Daniel Kvyat's getting the, uh, the, the, the Spec 3 as well. Um, it's going to trigger a grid drop for, for Kvyat. And that's the reason that Albon's not getting as well. Toro Rosso wanted to avoid having both of their cars hobbled by grid penalties at the same race. But if nothing else, it does prove that there's no problem with continuing with the, the spec two. So Albon's engine will do another Grand Prix weekend. They told us after the last race, um, well, they told us after Monaco, in fact, that the, the engine is now capable of doing six or seven full Grand Prix weekends, changing after four sort of casts a bit of doubt over that, doesn't it? But at least Albon continuing with it shows that there is some some truth in Honda's claim that the the spec 2 was reliable enough and it does seem to be that Honda's really putting effort into accelerating the development of this engine it doesn't seem to be that every upgrade they bring is a is kind of a, a, re a reaction a countermeasure to, to big problems that have arisen and they're they're just trying to accelerate along that along that learning curve that curve of progress as quickly as they possibly can which of course they need to do if they're to get into the situation that they'll presumably want to be which is to be able to just be that little bit stronger in 2020 and consistent challenges for race wins. Yeah, and to put this into into a bit of perspective, so last year when Honda was introducing it, its upgrades, its spec free gave them quite a big performance step and it gave a big reliability step on the MGUH side as well. But that didn't arrive until, it wasn't raced until Japan, one of the last races of the season. They impressed Red Bull last year when they rolled out spec two. They hit the deadline, hit the target performance-wise as well, that really impressed them. And they took a little bit longer than they wanted to, really, to nail spec free last year, but when it came, it offered a big boost. After introducing the 2019 spec two in Azerbaijan, that was reliability-focused. That's why it got rolled out early, because it was ready early. Same with spec free. It's ready, so here it is. Spec free is more performance-focused. It's not a major step like we saw at the end of last year, but it is, it is a boost. Honda has registered a performance increase on, on the dyno, so they're expecting more power from it. And that's very, very encouraging. What interests me is that they've they've said it's the turbocharger as well. It shows that they're still refining different areas within the power unit because they've, they've mainly been describing their upgrade so far as on the internal combustion engine side. And I know it can be quite confusing and maybe a bit frustrating sometimes when teams or manufacturers refer to the engines as power units because you've got the traditional V6, you've got all the ERS elements as well, you've got the battery and the fact that they've targeted the turbo as an area where they can clearly improve, they, they work with a third party to to improve the, the, the turbo technology, they've also got a cool bit of uh, tech crossover within the, 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 the expertise in Honda as the wider company as well, so that sort of internal partnership beyond just the Sakura F1 R&D facility uh, helped facilitate the the MGUH upgrade that was so important last year and it's that same partnership that's 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 made this turbo upgrade possible so I, I'm quite I'm quite excited by it because it just seems to be as you as you mentioned it's just methodical it's just okay here's this thing's been targeted this thing's been improved but that doesn't mean it's perfect it still needs to be better and Honda is absolutely adamant that it isn't on the level of Mercedes and Ferrari even with this latest engine upgrade and it'll be great for Red Bull because their thing even when they were evaluating whether to go to the Honda engine or stick with the Renault or not they always talked about performance being the key thing they're always looking for that performance and then reliability can maybe come later now the Honda's been pretty reliable still this year but Red Bull is also getting what it wants with that that going on that ongoing improvement from the engine 
the other side of that coin, though, is that Red Bull needs to find a little bit more with its car because it's still not quite there. Because uh, we, were, we were hoping that, well, we were expecting that Red Bull Honda, certainly pre-season, would be in a position to challenge for Monaco Grand Prix victory and maybe win that race. As it happens, they were able to challenge but not actually win it. So there's still a little bit more to go. So where does the, the team side of the, uh, of the equation play into this? Well, this is what I find, find so interesting about F1 2019. I know it's kind of boring looking from the outside in some ways because we've got Mercedes have won all seven races. Um, but let's not kid ourselves. If the if the season had gone if ever so slightly different at a few turns, it would actually be four frees from Mercedes to Ferrari. I, I, I find that it's actually been very, very impressive to see that Mercedes have moved the goalposts because let, when, when we were, um, and we'll hold our hands up, we said before the season, didn't we, that Honda would win two or three races this year. I was pretty confident that they'd win in Monaco, but no one expected Mercedes to suddenly become the king of the slow corners. That, that caught everyone by surprise, including Red Bull, Max Verstappen been on the record very very honestly and, and, and regularly saying that the that, that, that Red Bull is not the best car in F1 anymore and traditionally they kind of think that they are the best at building the chassis and, and, and nailing the aero so they've got work to do but Max said after Canada that actually a little bit more power and a little bit more balance from the car and the, the pictures will look really different for Honda that's uh, Honda and Red Bull sorry so that, that's how close they are there it's not like they're in no man's land between Mercedes and Ferrari and then down here you've got the midfield and Red Bull just sort of hovering between you know Verstappen's been top five every race he should have been he should have three podiums to his name already this season um, he was hobbled by the team strategy in Canadian Grand Prix qualifying so you know the fifth place there it was the worst result of the season and that's pretty good really isn't it fifth place at a power sensitive circuit so now they've got that little bit of extra power that Max wanted because that's coming from the spec three now let's see what Red Bull can do on the car side because Max said to us that it would look quite different if they got both. Well, they got one of them. So let's see if it makes a difference in Paul Ricard and then Austria. Uh, after that, Red Bull's home race, only a week away. Uh, I, 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 I think I think it's crucial now that Red Bull matches Honda's efforts, re matches Honda's efficiency at bringing upgrades and actually does and has something tangible to, to show over the next few Grand Prix to show that it's getting its car right because the engine partner is living up to its end of the bargain. Well, the key thing is, as we said all year, this is all about Red Bull and Honda building towards being able to be a title challenging force in 2020. It's been a it's been a relatively encouraging start, even if it's a bit disappointing they haven't been able to to win a race because that would be a big breakthrough for Honda. But this is a this is a positive step, and if it works as hoped as it should work, as I'm sure their simulations suggest, it could be very very positive for Red Bull and Honda.